What's going on, y'all? You already know it's Jay Faith. Welcome to episode 104. We have a special edition for you. We are live here in Atlanta, Georgia, here at the National Keystone Conference. Shout out to the Boys and Girls Club of America for all that they do for youth in America and on military installations here in America and around the world. Now, if you have seen a few episodes a little while back, I am super pleased to be able to be together with our guest uh, for episode 104. Her name is Janaya, an amazing teen advocate who is doing everything that she can to benefit youth around the world. So make sure that you stay tuned, get your pencils ready, get your notebooks out. Let's get in our right mind and let's make connections through conversations. What's up? This is a new era, bringing it all together Get in your right mind, we grind, we do it forever That's the only mission Elevated thinking is a vision Yeah, I'ma keep moving if it's so hit You can't stop me when I hop aboard the spaceship Sitting watch as I make shit I am not a human, I'm a living constellation Say it, say it Say it, Deontay Rosigo lady Cause she doesn't have a life And that's when her like Hits? Come on, please. It's weird that she said that she doesn't have a life, too, because she's so involved in so many she different really things. She really is. And then, like, I was saying the argument should have been Taylor Swift that just stuck to, like, pop, maybe country. Yeah. Beyonce has revolutionized country as a black woman and then R&B. Like, she, she's honestly done it all. She's even hit gospel. Yeah. I mean, she started in gospel because she started in the church. Like, what? Was Taylor Swift the marketing boy for the Super Bowl? Please. No, literally, literally. That's all she's <laughs> no, been. Uh, yeah. Jordan got no mad offense. with me. She was like, "So it's okay when like they do that with other celebrities, but with Taylor Swift, this now I was like, no. Every time Taylor Swift came on, like the screen, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, because it's like you score a touchdown, and the first thing that they show is Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. Like it's not about it's Taylor Swift. It's never that about deep. The team <laughs> that just is playing. Like, chill out, relax. It's but never that deep. I don't know. No, I agree. I agree. When I first saw, saw that, I was like, I was mad. You can't t- like, yo, you can't tell me that this is not staged for oh, the Super is. Bowl. Your team actually makes it to the Super Bowl. It's staged. Some of those uh, like calls, they were not. No, some of the calls they called on the 49ers, that was not yeah. it at all. Like we were. I don't even. I'm not a football fanatic. Like I'll go. To, I like college football games. I really do. Yeah. But like when it comes to the NFL, I think we put way too much pressure on me to choose like, a dang team, <laughs> and so. Well, as a it's kid, a I was a hustler. So I, uh, okay. at church, I remember this one person paid me $5 to be an Eagles fan. I took that money, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, I'll rub an Eagles jersey real quick. I didn't even That's put the jersey on. No. I just took the money. Hey, there's, there's, there's <laughs> five bucks. Listen, I, my, we did a staff outing to an apple orchard. And my buddy, which I was like, dude, say less. He goes, dude, I bet you 20 bucks you don't skip all the way down this row out of the apple orchard. Just skip. Just skip. I was like, dude, I'll do like four rows. I don't care. Easiest 20, 20 bucks ever. Oh my gosh, like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was in the Venmo, it's that not hustle five mentality. minutes later. I was like, listen. You gotta have a hustler's mentality. Listen, I do not even care. It's a dog eat dog world. $20? Oh yeah. That goes my gas. <laughs> so skip? To so skip? Come on. I'll sing skip to my Lulu. Yeah, dog. I'll sing a song. Why wouldn't y'all let me sing Barney? Why couldn't I sing Barney? Why did you sing Barney? Because it's, I love you. It's a perfect goodbye. Is it? I or is it the as we go on? You don't. Vitamin C? Am I aging myself now? Or do you not know that song? <laughs> you don't know that song? Dude, that's, a, that's like the age old song. And I say age old. Meaning old people of age, old age, um, that you would play at like graduations, basically like graduations, and it's like it's basically just talking about like we're like leave, like we're departing. We've been together for a long time, and now we're all moving off into different. I'll play it for you later. I think I ate with Barney. I think Barney covered it all. Everybody loves the purple dinosaur. 
do but, they though? Okay. Do they, they do. <laughs> no, like everybody in there, when I tell them, I'm like, hey, I was in your position two years ago, that's when I start to feel old. Because mm. what? Like, I get I'm just 19, but if someone says yes, ma'am, to me again, I'm crying. I'm having a mental <laughs> breakdown. I really am. I say that like every time I come to a Keystone conference, yeah. I'm having a mental breakdown. But this is my third one, so obviously I'm doing something right. Yeah, we keep, we keep wanting you back. Yeah. It's a good thing. I hope I can come back next year because Mr. LeVar, one of his old teens, uh, he was like, I FaceTimed him because we've been in contact since I met him uh, my very first year. Yeah. So I FaceTimed him. He was like, you were Mr. LeVar. I was like, yeah. And so then Mr. LeVar was like, oh, I got a position for you next year. I looked at him. I said, I want one too. I need my little what's reunion. Up? Yeah, what's up? Oh, I'm what's trying to what's intern what's for BJCA. I really am. For sure. Because yeah. I, I feel like there's some revamping that just needs to be done. Yeah. We were talking about for the National Guard having a virtual keystone. Mm. A club that yeah. way they can still do their volunteerism but in case they can't meet in person they could still like level up think of it like a game and stuff like that and then it could also have elements of myfuture.net having challenges on there too yeah and i pitched the idea and everybody seemed to like it but it's just like the beginning stages and just the revamping thing that's going to take a lot of work but yeah. i mean anything you really want to do in life is going to take a lot of work yeah and you need uh, you definitely need people like you obviously i know you're very motivated we said this on the last podcast but people that are motivated to like not only start it but to continue to push it oh, yeah. and be like hey like no 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 we like we need to get this done like where are we at what's left to be done let's keep pushing let's keep getting it done because yeah. i think that's what happens a lot of the times especially not to knock it in a bad way but a lot of times like people have these great ideas in bgca and military organizations and then they're like yeah great idea and then they start but then they never they follow never through. Fin- yeah the follow then, through you know, and then you come back that. six months later and then they're like, hey, we have this great idea. Remember mm-hmm. that great idea we had? Oh, let's try and, and it's like a constant cycle. And we need just people that are like, no, let's get this done now so that we can push forward and keep moving get the results and that elevate we're looking it. For. Yeah, because people don't understand like okay i'm i'm not a basketball girly never will be uh, i'm a track runner but like when it comes to basketball i remember when i was doing like my free throw shots they would always be like make sure you follow through because if i didn't follow through my shot was not going to go in mm-hmm. and it's the same with these ideas and these programs if you're going to start up the idea make sure you see the follow through not only so you know what to do next in life but like also to be sure that you reach your goal because at the end of the day you have the idea if you don't follow through then just respectfully don't have the idea because you're not necessarily wasting opportunity but what about other people who are you who are the people you're leaving out and impact is everybody not just one person so who are you leaving out who needs this we always have to meet people where they are who needs this as we're speaking and just because you had the idea you don't follow through people miss out on opportunities and doors that were once open to them are not closed right because of follow through yeah and there's people that are relying on you that mm. they don't even know that they are relying on yeah. you because they don't know that you're actually doing that. But it's like you have people that are kind of counting on you, like unknowingly, hoping for someone to make a difference, make a change, and you're in that position to do it, yeah. and you're not doing anything about it. And obviously there's caveats to that of what's available to you and how you can do it. But, I mean, with anything, I think if you push hard enough, yeah. You can make something happen. You can. Instead and of just flat out nothing. I don't think people understand as well, like, when you really want something, you make that a priority. For sure. And when it comes to things like that, like being passionate for me, that's already built into me. I feel like sometimes with some of the stuff that people try to do, it's either within you or you learn to get it or it's not there at all. And that's okay if it's not there at all. Because that just means it's not for you right now and that it could be for you in a later time. But when it comes to making it a priority, you do everything within your power, capabilities, potentials to make sure it happens. Mm -hmm. For me, when it comes to caring for youth, my current uh, thing that I'm focused on right now, my current platform... I'm trying to figure out how to advocate for youth. Military youth have education gaps, and that needs to be talked about. Because we move around so much, when it comes time for us to come to college, like, I'm going to be a thousand percent honest. College, my freshman year at Xavier, was on, it was a bit of a struggle sometimes because of my education gap. I'm in a history class, and we're learning about Latin America and U.S. relations, and I don't even know some of the documents that we're talking about and i have to go home and do research myself luckily i passed with a b but at the end of the day like the fact that because i moved around so much and that's not a bad thing at all i'm very well traveled and well versed but i'm at a disadvantage when it comes to education and some opportunities because i didn't learn what people are learning 
or they've already learned. Like when people ask me about geography questions, some people are like, oh yeah, my geography class sucked too. I didn't even have a geography class. Right. I didn't have a cursive class. I didn't learn how to write in cursive. Mm -hmm. We didn't have home ec um, in Baumholder, Germany, where I went to high school. We didn't even have a career class. That's why we started having career fairs. So we mm -hmm. took that initiative. Right. Now, teens out there, military teens, are going to be relying on us to take this initiative because it's not necessarily embarrassing to like, but when it can mess you up mentally. But it had me feeling like, oh, am I less than? Like, is my education not where everyone else is? And I know I'm smart, but I'm also smart in a way where I've learned from experiences. There's yeah. book smart, there's experience smart. There's a lot of different ways to be knowledgeable, but my knowledge, I had to shape it in a way that made sense to me, but also so I could retain the information right. because it's a lot. It's history, and yes, we need to learn from history so don't we repeat the same mistakes, sure. but at the same time, what am I truly learning, and why haven't I learned it before? Right. Education gaps. Right, and it's it's one thing too. You, you guys move so often. Yes. You're already kind of the minority, if you will, of new person coming in, not knowing anybody, and then to add the education piece, which, like you said, can also be something that can detrimentally like mess somebody up. Because then, if they go into it and they're like, "Man, I feel like really stupid because I don't know this." knowing the fact that they haven't learned it but like just because everybody else is gonna be like man they're so stupid and then you hear that enough times you're gonna be like no maybe i am and it's like no you're not you just never had the opportunity to learn what it is that they're learning because like i hear it from you know some of my past youth of the years they're like yeah i was in virginia and they taught this and then when i went to came to mass yep. they, different curriculum they didn't and the curriculum is different and now i'm taking like two step back classes in order to catch up and it's like it shouldn't have to be that way when it comes to that especially for military kids i'm not saying that you need like this ultimatum or ultimate uh advantage you know uh what's the word i'm looking for just like i guess advantage of you know as you move but at the same time it's like you got to be mindful like their families are sacrificing themselves to serve this country they didn't shoot necessarily choose the life so we have to have some grace with that and allow them to be able to kind of mold into wherever they're going in a much easier way without causing those detrimental effects of like I feel stupid because I don't know what these people know. Yeah, and then it's also hard because some colleges, they do have the resources, the tutoring resources, but you don't know where exactly your education is short until you are in that class and you're trying to learn and not retaining the information. So I feel like one of the first steps that we're going to have to do is get data. Of course, we love doing that. We're going to have to get yeah. the test, um, have kid, like military youth, compare them to someone that hasn't moved their whole life and see where the education is and then also help that youth identify, okay, Okay, so one of your weakest subjects is math. What math did you fall off of? Because I I went from Virginia learning about decimals to going to Washington State for seven months. That was like the shortest we've ever been anywhere mm -hmm. to learning how to multiply and divide fractions and stuff like that. I'm like, wait. That's a big gap. I didn't even learn about the decimals. I still barely even know what that is. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? We're dividing fractions. How do yeah. you even turn a decimal into? It was a lot. Mm -hmm. And... For me, I'm also someone that deals with anxiety. So I was having so much anxiety. Math just wasn't connecting. And I feel like if I actually did go through the right math courses, I wouldn't be in a position where I'm at where they told me I need to take a math course for college. Mm. And I was like, oh, I'm looking through my major prerequisites. And I'm like, actually, I don't have to do that <laughs> because right. I, I was nervous and I didn't want to do it. I know sometimes you have to learn and you have to put yourself out there to learn. But I also know my comfortability. And I'm a communication specialist and journalism double major with a PR concentration, minor in nonprofits. I don't need to do I don't need to do math. I'll right. hire somebody. Right. <laughs> but I should still try it. It's just yeah. it's so hard. And I've, I already feel like I'm already at a different level. So that that gets into your mind and especially as youth, it's so easy oh, to compare sure. yourself to another person. I remember during Youth of the Year, even though I knew my story, when it came to hearing other people's story, I was like, oh, I can't just help myself and compare it to you because you've experienced this and I've experienced that. Does that mean I could still like have an amazing story as yours or is my story now inadequate because you've been through more strife and adversity than I have? Right. So it's there's so much, so many pathways that lead to comparison, but comparison is also the thief of joy. Oh, so sure. I've, I've had to like just reevaluate it, but those education gaps, the education deficit with military children, got to fix it, got to work on yeah. it, got to do something towards it. Absolutely. But yeah, I, I feel like it's just important to talk about it. Yeah.
I don't know if I shared it with you. I've, I've definitely shared it on the pod before, but obviously if I haven't, just having this conversation, it goes along with what you said. It's like, I, here's my view on education. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not like really like that big into it. Mm -hmm. So let me preface that. But like my view with education, <clears throat> my view with education is I feel like they should treat it like college. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because if you have somebody that is intelligent in math, but not good in history, mm -hmm. why are you gonna keep pushing them into history for them to fail when you could be guiding them into math where they're going to succeed a little, mm -hmm. succeed even more? Granted, or vice versa, not good at math, but good at history, like I was. But at the same time, I, I preface it again, like you have your prerequisites, mm -hmm. like you, need, you should know basic math, you should know kind of the basic things that you are going to need in order to live in America, live or, or live wherever you are from, um, to to just sustain yourself in life. Just natural, basic life skills yeah. when it comes to math or whatever. I feel like there are those things that you just need to learn. And then after that, like why why are we just like forcing kids into things that we already know they're not gonna get do well in? Yeah. And that's just that's just people. Like you look at Eminem, he didn't do very well in school, but he's amazing lyrically he's amazing with words and that's that's just a different type of learning so people learn different ways so it's like i don't i wish they would kind of do it that way a little bit where it's like let's learn the things that you basically need to know mm -hmm. and then how can we kind of guide you to the to find your passions to find the things that you're really good at to help you succeed and i think you'll start seeing kids kind of gravitating towards their career fields a mm -hmm. little bit more and again, you can have those tech schools where people can experiment, try different shops or whatever so that you can try those different fields. But I just feel like sometimes you kind of put kids down. It's like, man, like I'm never going to be good at history. Oh, man, I can't graduate because I'm having a bad grade in history. I'm doing really good in math. But because of this history grade that I'm never going to be good at, I can't graduate. And then right. they end up dropping that course regardless, too. And dropping a course, that harms you more than you think it will. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember um, when I was in Germany, we were, uh, it was the day of a volleyball tournament. So the volleyball girls were gone, but the rest of us were still at the school. And all of a sudden, there was no advertisement of it. There was no newsletter that went out saying, hey, parents, this is happening. They forced us to take the ASVAB. Mm -hmm. And for me, sorry, <laughs> and for me, um, you're telling me I need to take the ASVAB and one, my mom, when it came to us being a part of the military, my mom was a single black soldier raising three kids by herself. She went through so much with the military. So when it came to her kids, we weren't even allowed to wear military colors. I think I wore my first pair of military green pants when I was in seventh grade because she was like, I experienced this at work. I'm not going to come home to it. Like this is, I don't need to see that here. So right. having that separation, she needed the separation because it was just so much at work, especially because let's just be honest. People do not want to see black females in positions of power. That could be a no, whole nother conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so she, she didn't want to see it at home. And she had always told us you're not joining the military. Like she, she respectfully told us uh, my brother, he's trying to join the Navy now, but my mom's okay with that because she understands what he's trying to go for. But with us, she was like, no, you're not joining it. So when it came to the ASVAB, I go to the school and I see that no one's in my homeroom. I'm like, okay, that's the first red flag. What in the cheese is going on? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. What is occurring? So I'm looking around the school and all of a sudden I see um, Caleb's mom, Miss Pajay, Aunt Pajay. I miss her so much. I love her. So Aunt Pajay was in the room and she was like, oh, y'all are taking the ASVAB today. Er? We doing what? You doing what? Yeah, what right. are we doing? Like, you're taking an ASVAB today. And I was like, but why am I doing that? And she was like, everyone's doing it today. And we have uh, kids from 6th through 12th. So I think they made 9th through 12th take it. It's 6th, 7th, and 8th. They went to the teen center or something like that. But it was still confusing because I knew that I wanted to go into the nonprofit and PR world. So why am I, as someone that's a business major, about to go take a military test and people were just like oh so you can see like what you're good at what you're not good at okay i understand that part but you can have me taking a career test you can have the kids that are going towards the business side not going in the military have military take the asvab and then have the rest of us taking another test but no they made all of us take that test it was about i think an hour and a half maybe i don't know we had to wait for everybody to get finished and the whole time I'm just sitting there stressing, like, why am I taking something that's not going to be helping me in the long run? When I looked at my ASVAB score, I was like, I already know this stuff because I know myself. Mm 
yeah. and a lot of uh, people like they try calling their parents I went to the front office and I was like listen if I call my mother right now she's going to express to you that she is not comfortable with me taking this test because I don't have plans to join the military I'm wasting your time I'm wasting your resources exactly. it's exactly. so much you could be using those resources honestly to get us more teachers because we were understaffed I had to take AP government and I had to take financial literacy online because we were so understaffed mm -hmm. that's where those resources could have went but no you want me to take the ASVAB right. I take it get my results back like I said and it just doesn't change a single thing for me and my mom when I try to call her my mom's a master sergeant you really think she was able to answer the phone yeah no and the worst part about it, so like I said earlier, they didn't have any advertisement for it. No, like, we have a Buccaneer newsletter that goes out at least once a week every Friday or something like that. They waited two hours after we took the ASVAB to put out that we were taking the ASVAB. I feel like, I, I, to me, that's, like, intentional. Because uh, oh it's, yeah. like, you, you made sure that, you, well, your bases aren't really covered. But you made sure that nobody could stop you from pulling kids to not do that. Because they probably knew that if they had put this out and been like, hey, kids are taking this. They would have pulled. They would have pulled so many kids and been like, no. Parents would have said it or the kids would have been like, no, I'm all set. And it's like, especially with the military. And again, I'm not knocking the military. It's like, you either know or you, or you, you, you know and you know. Like, I know I'm going to go in the military or I know I'm not going in the military. Like... If you don't understand what the military consists of, at least on a basic level, you're probably not going to go in the military. More than likely not. Granted, like, you may not know, like, what boot camp is going to consist of or whatever, but, like, you got to have some idea. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if I'm going to push forward with that, then I'll start taking mm -hmm. these tests, I'll start doing all this other stuff to prepare myself for that. But if I'm not interested, why am I, again, wasting mm -hmm. resources, wasting time? when you could be applying that elsewhere and and that was my senior year as well like at that point i could have been checking to make sure my college applications were going through i could have been updating my resume we don't have that either i feel like schools need to in like okay i'm putting a lot on schools but we also have to realize schools do not have the necessary resources they need to teach these future generations yeah i've talked about education gaps but also the career and technical field a lot of students now that I see, they have trade schools available. But when you're a military kid, you don't know about it until someone that knows about it tells you about it. Right. And that puts us at a disadvantage. Let's just be a thousand percent honest. I feel like if I would have went to a trade school or had more hands-on experience with PR, I would be in a very different position than I am now. Right now, like, people on my college campus knew that they could text me and be like, hey, could you design this business card for me? I had a whole system. The first business card, I do it for free. That way you can not only get your business up, but you can start to have a trust with me. You can start to right. bond with me and everything. And then the next charge, I, the next card I charge you for, or the next flyer right. I charge you for. Right. But I had to do that myself because I had no other way of learning how to be an entrepreneur. And another example, I've... I haven't heard of anyone taking uh, home ec classes anymore. Yeah. The, there's, Again, the basic life yeah, skills. That you, you don't learn it. Yeah. The financial literacy class I took, we would, there was this platform that we would use. We would go through different slides, read all of the slides, maybe watch little cartoons about how cows are worth money or something like that. And then we were expected to take a test. Yeah, that's, yeah. I had the highest, I remember one time the principal came to our classroom because we were juniors and seniors at the time. I was a junior. Our principal came into the classroom and was like, listen, the person that has the highest average in here is Naya, and she has a 77, I think. I had a Dang, C, that's tough. That's tough. the highest average, that's because tough. of how we were being taught. Yeah, that's tough. It is, and I just... I feel like we do so much unnecessary things because in our minds we're trying to program these you to be a certain way but at the end of the day yes you could try to force something on someone but if it's not retained all the hard work and the time and energy that you're putting into them you just wasted that and that energy can also go into yourself to provide a better outlet for them yeah. like for me it's so easy to cater to someone it's one of my love languages yeah yeah it's one of my love languages like i can easily cater to someone once i get to know you i'm like okay how can i utilize your potential in the best way so you can build yourself and have a platform and that's all i do for the youth i've had at least three youth come up to me today like hey i want to do youth of the year because they recognize the potential within me so now i'm going to help them recognize the potential within themselves mm -hmm. that's what our resources need to go to yeah. but no we're doing asvab tests on people that aren't even joining the military yeah. i have no intentions of joining the military yeah and you're relatable too. It's I, I think 
one of the things that really caught my attention, like with you, with Xavier too, it's like oh, yeah. people that are relatable and people that like they can see themselves in, mm -hmm. where it's it's not like a robotic type of thing. It's not. It's like I can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it it'll take some work, but I can do that because it's like that is attainable. But you see some other people, it's like not being themselves, not being authentic. You're like, I don't you know shy if away I can from reach it. that level. Like, that's just like way too high for me. Like, no, it is. It's just, you, it's kind of a case by case basis sometimes. It is. The people, and we know some of those people, but uh, which we, <laughs> won't, we won't address, but you know where I'm going. But it's, but it, it's, it's the truth. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's really, under, it, it, it takes, again, it takes people like you, Xavier, um, those two people that are being authentic with themselves. We've said this all the time, mm -hmm. just being authentically you to really show people that these things are possible, these things are attainable, and like you can do it. Again, it takes work, but it's possible. Yeah, and I think that's another reason why representation matters so much. Like for me, with all the stuff, I'm not a very political person. I'm gonna just put that out there. I'm really right. not, because I feel like at the end of the day, there's so many different routes to go with politics, but if you choose this wrong one, you're aligning yourself with something you thought was you, but it isn't even you at all. You can't just go one route with politics. It's, it's too much. So I'm not truly into it. I just make sure that at the end of the day, the country that I'm living in, I do my part. So when it came to uh, politics and I saw that a black woman was up for being president, I was like, that's the representation we need. But at the same time, um, one of the classes that I took for Xavier, it was called Lives of Black Women and Girls. And it was all about how black women, we talked about stereotypes. We also talked about maternal health. We talked about um, just the history of black women in general. You owe us a lot. Anyway, <laughs> I want my reparations and my auntie's reparations and my auntie's auntie's reparations. But um, <laughs> I need that on a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just that class it was so monumental to me because when I look at Kamala Harris and I see that a lot of people like they're standing for her but then there's other people that are like why are we putting a woman in a position of power especially a black woman don't you think a black woman who's experienced significant strife adversity and honestly sees through every single lens like for me as a black woman i could put myself in the min minority space but i could also put myself in the majority space i know how to cater to both sides and that's i think that's a women's intuition already but a black woman's intuition oh it's a whole different level yeah. so we finally had that representation representation to show that if i want to be president i could be president that's how some of these young girls are looking up to Ka uh, kamala harris and that's the same way we need to be when we go out and represent ourselves. When I come to BGCA events, I remember the first year, someone expressed concern to me. They were like, okay, we see that you're the hype woman and everything, and we love that for you. But are you going to be able to keep this up every single year as you grow? At the end of the day, there's no keeping up what's authentically you. Right. There's no mask. You're just allowing yourself to be free. Sometimes I'll admit, I'll put that mask on, but it's only in situations where I know I need to protect myself because I, I, ex I preach vulnerability. I really do. I'm like, be vulnerable people. But at the same time, being vulnerable with yourself, that's really hard to do. I've had to look in the mirror and realize that that mask is on and take it off and be like, no, like allow yourself to breathe. Allow yourself to have grace. I think uh, Xavier said it today. You have to take time and make self time, me time, yeah. because when you through the year and I say this a lot, even with Jesus and God, like that selfless service, that is so much harder than you think. And I know my Bible verse yesterday was we love because God loved us. God loved us first. He loved us first. And I see that. I'm like, okay, the reason I'm able to love people as fiercely and as hard as I do is because God loved me so much that he sacrificed his only begotten son. But at the same time, I have to appreciate where Jesus came from and the strife that he faced because there was a moment where he looked back and was like, I don't want to do this. Like, yeah. he had to talk to God and be like, listen. Three times he asked him. Yes. Three and times he asked him. It's crazy that Jesus, the person we know as the most selfless person ever, doubted. Yeah. But Literally. it's okay. Human. Yeah. He's human. That's the part that we're forgetting. So when it comes to this, when it comes to this selfless service and all that we encompass in this representation, we have to realize that authenticity is more than just being yourself, is being able to let loose, being able to take a deep breath because we're all holding in a breath. We really are. Every time we enter a new situation, 
every time we enter a new problem, every time we're in a new environment, it's so much to take in, but you have to let it out. Yeah. You have to let it out. You have to be you. Yeah, because we can be fake with ourselves. Too. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, like, oh, I'm fine. I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. Nope. I'll be, like, bro, like, no, you're not. Like, and I've had to check myself sometimes, too, and being like, Jay, like, no, like, you're really not, like, cool. Like, you need to take a break. Like, there was a couple weeks I took, like, a kind of, like, a super backseat to, like, the podcast. Like, I was doing it. But, like, if I wasn't getting clips out, I'm like, I don't care. If I'm not posting, I don't care. Like it's just too much because I'm like I'm doing it by myself I'm not being myself because of the stress that I'm facing trying to do everything so I'm like but I was like no I gotta keep grinding I gotta keep grinding it's like no like you it like they always say it's okay to not be okay you just have to acknowledge it and you have to address it yep and so it's like we be fake we're being fake with ourselves and then like we're lying to ourselves and then we're again like you said like putting that mask on for other people and then people are seeing an image that maybe not be authentic and then people see that and then they react to that thinking that's okay and it's like no it's, it's not. not like i need those breaks i need to take some time to just literally just chill and not post not talk to nobody and just be by myself it's not to be selfish it's not to be like forget everybody else and everybody else is whack and it's just about me it's like no like i need I can't take care of anybody else before you take care if of yourself. I'm not yeah. taking care of myself, you know, and it's like, and I love that, you know, just, that was something that the whole Jesus and I literally just like kind of preached on that uh, a little while back of just like, like three times, like he was like nervous about doing this, like take this cup from me, but if it be your will, and I'm actually, it's crazy, I'm wearing the shirt, I'll show it to you after. <laughs> Merch, Crazy. merch plug, merch plug. Crazy. Um, <laughs> Ivy, his, uh, for his glory, check it out. Um, I'm actually a brand ambassador for that. Okay, anyway. love that. Oh, yeah, uh, I know that. I follow yeah. you on Instagram. <laughs> I'm about to say, what? <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, yeah, he just, there was just so many things he could have done. He knew what was happening. And, like, I watched, like, The Chosen. I don't know if you've watched The Chosen. I've heard of it. It's actually, like, really good. Um, obviously, like, take it. I don't want to say it's like super like over the top, but like obviously like with anything religious or uh, just Christianity, or whatever. Use your like, spirit of discernment. Exactly. It exists. Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> understand, you know, take what what is re- what is right, remove what is wrong, et cetera, et cetera. But just like seeing the things that he did in like a visual aspect, and just like he knew what was coming, he knew who was going to do what, and still follow mm. through with it. And it's like. That follow through. It's that it's, follow through. it's crazy to think, despite who we are as people, yeah. and not only the people that were there then, but like he saw people like us, like now, being like, no, like it's not just for the people that are watching me do this, but like pe- people that are going to be hundreds of thousands yeah. of years from now. Like I want this for them too. Yeah, I don't think people understand that there is tenfold fold like walking behind you like i'm here right now but not only do i have my ancestors that are behind me i have people that i'm trying to inspire and make change for so it's not only me but what you were talking about earlier like with the podcast when you kind of took a step back people don't realize like we talked earlier a little bit about like a hustler's mentality and making sure that you get the bread you got yourself covered but at the end of the day a hustler didn't just learn how to hustle Right. They had to put they had to put themselves in positions where they tested something out. If it didn't work, okay, put that back. Uh, let me try something else. They kept going to the drawing board and figure out a new lane or avenue to take. And that's what we need to do when it comes to these breaks. And also realizing that life is just a learning experience. You have to keep learning. You have to keep learning. There is no like just stopping like, oh, you know what? I think I've done enough for life. I'm just going to stop here. You can't even say those words because at the end of the day, something else is going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen in a given day. Like today, I, I'm i here to help out with Youth of the Year. Well, not Youth of the Year. I'm here to help out with Keystone in any way that I'm needed. And I don't know what capacity that's going to be. I'm just here to help. Right. When I'm told to do something, I'm like, okay, I'll go do that. And then I try to do a little bit more just so I make sure not only do I accomplish the job, but people also see, oh, she really did that. Like, it wasn't just something she was told to do. It was something she really wanted to do and help. Like, I tell people this all the time. Your actions 
need to match your words. Oh, 100%. A thousand. 100%. Like, 100%. you you can't yeah. just sit here yeah. and be like, I love doing this, and then don't show your love for it. I can't sit here and say, I love doing stuff for the youth, and then not do anything for the youth. Right. Even though I'm in college, even though I'm a college sophomore, I have college peers that I can be like, oh, you know what? We need this. We need that. I did that as Xavier. Spoke on two board of executives. But at You're the end of the day, <laughs> I, <laughs> I still had the youth in the back of my mind. Yeah. I really did. So... I feel like with all of it being said, with the hustler's mentality, you can't advocate for others if you can't advocate for yourself. You said that as well. You can't take care of others if you don't take care of yourself. People always say there's no I in team, but there's an M and an E. Clock it. Yeah. There's an M and an E for a reason. Yeah. You can't be a part of a team and like try to have an impact. Impact starts with I. So you can't do all of this. And you don't even know what you're doing for yourself because I told the youth earlier or yesterday that if you are trying to find your voice and you like seek it in the wrong outlets, you will not ever find a voice at all. And then let's talk about it as well. There's so many things out now like AI and stuff like that that's taking those little bits of information and taking it and using it to help you but at the same time be a disadvantage to you. Mm -hmm. So there's so much out there in the world that's going to try to dictate and turn your car in a different way. But at the end of the day, if you know what you stand for and know who you are, when it comes to those oh those doubtful moments like, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, you take a break, pause, why don't I want to do it? Right. That's what, um, for me, that's how I'm going to raise my kids, actually. Like, no. if my kids are having, like, a little temper tantrum, I'm like, okay, where is this emotion stemming from? What caused it? How can I help you get over it? Okay, if they still are throwing that temper tantrum, I'm like, okay, do that in your room. Yeah. I'm going to give you your break. Give I'm going to take my break mm -hmm. because we're both doing something right now. And at the end of the day, your emotions are at a higher level than mine. Right. So until we can meet at that common place, let me give you a break. I'm going to check in on you. I'm going to feed you. I'm probably hungry as well. Right. But that's right. what people don't understand. You have to see where that emotion's coming from, where that doubt's coming from. It could be coming from a past. That's what therapy. It could be coming from a past, like, True. True. trauma you've been through. So it's so multifaceted when it comes to taking care of yourself. But the best thing that you can do, I think it's uh, limitations. I know it's three. I don't know exactly what verse it is. But it says, in times of, like, great uh, adversity, go off and pray. Mm -hmm separate yourself and go off and pray i can i could quote a scripture i can't tell you what bob i'm getting there yeah, yeah. but Same. it says go off and pray and seclude yeah. yourself and people don't realize it says it for a reason because it also says to not lean on your own understanding and it also says to guard your heart so many warnings in the bible so many but at the end of the day all of it stems from you making decisions that impact your life and then others but your life comes first you that's yeah the God honest truth. You have to put yourself first, well, God first, then yourself, because you wouldn't even be here without him. You're his creation, and he's made you in the way he has for a reason. You're a masterpiece, but you're also a masterpiece trying to masterpiece. Hey, now she preaching. <laughs> so put yourself first. That way you're in these positions to advocate for education gaps, to see that women, that black women are in power, to know that even though you feel like you can't do it now, you can do it in a later time in life. It's so multifaceted, like I said, but at the end of the day, it starts with you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true because, like, separating yourself because you have to... It, it's kind of like intermingling uh, a lot of the stuff that you said where it's mm -hmm. like you don't want to react to the situation and the emotions that you feel in that instant because it could be the wrong emotion oh, yeah. of, of what is happening. And two, like you said... The person may be just in a certain moment reacting reacting to maybe something that happened five days ago, five yep. years ago, that you don't even know about. And your your response could either add, it could add more to it because it's what they've already been, had trauma with. And now you're just adding onto it and making the situation worse. Granted, sometimes you might get lucky and it might you might help and whatever, but it's like, you have to go and kind of analyze the situation like, what is my reaction going to be? Am I reacting with emotion or am I reacting to help better the situation? Do I under, even understand what the situation is? Mm -hmm. And two, like I do it at, at my job, um, more so with the younger kids. The teens are a little bit better, but um, if like a little kid is crying and I try talking to them and, and they're not responding or whatever, and I, I literally tell them, I say, I'm going to give you a moment because I, I feel like you need a moment and I'm going to come back. 
and I'll kind of like distance myself like where the camera is and I'll be like over here and then some of the kids will come over and be like Mr. Justin Sarah's crying and I'm like no I know like I recognize that I'm giving her a moment and usually like they kind of hear that and then they kind of like mold out of that and like I think for them and obviously it doesn't happen every single time but I think a lot of times it's like being able to acknowledge their emotions and not just like hey stop crying what are you doing stop doing yeah. that like you don't need to cry it's like maybe they do maybe like they've had i've been there like maybe you just had so much bent up uh, built up emotions and trauma and everything else that you've been just kind of compressing within yourself that weight that we put on our own shoulders that you know we should be given to god Amen. that you're finally just like i've had enough and i need to just let it out and some for pe some people that's crying some people that's breaking things putting a hole in the wall fist you know punching a wall you know whatever it may be whatever that outlet is going to the gym and working out for three hours like whatever it is but it's like you have to see it twofold oh, yeah. you know how are you responding and is that going to make the situation better but also understanding where that person is coming from their perspective and what they've been through because like i said they could be reacting from trauma that was five days ago five years ago ten years ago mm -hmm. that maybe they didn't recognize was even there at the moment but you said something or something happened in that situation that triggered them and now they're in a spiral that you're trying to handle that you may not be handling correctly. Yeah, I remember um, I was talking to I think someone I had met at a Keystone conference I'm not sure where the conversation that came from but we were talking about I think his name was Too Chilly or something like that. I still follow him <laughs> on Instagram, but yeah. Uh, we, too chill. Chill.2x, two X, I think. I don't know. But yeah, so we were talking and we had a conversation about, like, I'm, I'm talking about black kids because that's my perspective. Black kids yeah. do not know how to communicate. And I'm going to tell you where that comes from. Fix your face. Will we go into the store? Don't yeah, look at yeah. nothing. Don't touch nothing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, stuff nothing. like that. You walk into a store with limits. You walk into a room where fix your face. Oh, that means I can't truly express my emotions. And I'm not like my mother's going to watch this. I'm not calling out my mother. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, anything yeah. like that. But I'm saying it's passed down. People don't realize. So it's called an enduring legacy. Like it goes from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. And a black women, we have this enduring legacy of being stereotyped in different ways, but also being silenced. People always are like, oh. This little joke, were you silenced or were you silent? No, we're silenced on a combination of already being silent. And when it comes to that, it's so scary to finally use your voice because you've been put down for so long. Mm. So that's another blockade or limitation or and honestly, kind of overstepping a boundary when it comes to communication. Black I wanted to do a this thesis on it to be honest, because I feel like if I ask my black peers now, like, hey, what is a phrase you were told as a child like that kind of silence you they might say fix your face or uh like of course that little phrase i'm not one of your little friends like i've met parents yeah. who actually act like their child's best friend and that has led to them having a better relationship but it's not necessarily talked about because everybody sees one perfect cookie cutter answer to everything i'll be a thousand percent honest like people think it's just yes or no what about the gray area it's not it's always just boundaries. black and white it's boundaries it is it's like being able to be their friend mm -hmm. in order to have that relationship where it's like if i have something going I on can talk to you. i can communicate with you but at the same time like understanding like no i'm the parent mm -hmm. and like you gonna respect me. oh most definitely and people cool. people take advantage of uh, respect as well like for me there's people that will text my phone to this day and i'm gonna just be a thousand percent honest at college I was that helpful person. I always tried to be. If you need something, I got you. But it was to the point where people would text me and be like, hey, Naya, can you help me with this assignment before saying, how are you doing? Mm. How's, how's your day been? What Do you need out? anything? Yeah, like it's automatically, how are you going to benefit me today? Mm -hmm. You I know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to benefit you today. At the end of the day. If I don't, ha if I have it myself, I'm more than willing to give to others. But it has to be a mutual respect. I'm a people pleaser. I recognize within, I recognize that within myself. I people please, and the minute I feel like people are distancing themselves from me, I blame it on me because I've always taken the blame for a lot of stuff in my life. But I had to realize I had to stop doing that. Yep. I have, it's so bad. I apologize for everything. If you bump into me, I'm sorry. I'm in your way. No. This is my moment. This is my bubble. This is my space. And now I'm standing in it. I say, excuse me. And 
sometimes I have a little attitude. But at the end of the day, people have to realize once you cross my boundary once, you're not doing it again. My aunt, we had a conversation about this. She was like, I don't trust people automatically. You have to earn my trust. And you're not just going to earn my trust once. You have to continuously and like be consistent in earning my trust. Yeah. Because if we give our trust away too easily, guard your heart. You're not guarding your heart. You're letting the world seep into you. Yeah. And it's so hard, but like it talks about in the Bible as well that God and Jesus are the light that drives out the darkness. And when you were talking about like making sure you take care of yourself, going into your word, we have to go back into the word. And a lot of people like, I will say this, there are some contradictions in the Bible, but let's also be honest. The Bible was passed down orally. So it isn't cookie cutter perfect, but at the end of the day, I guarantee you for any problem, situation, or circumstance that you have in your life, you go to your word, you're going to find something for it. Wrote on that the other, just the other, probably Monday. I'm just reading your mind. Monday or Tuesday. I'm t no, it's <laughs> true though. Like, um, there's two things. It was like, one, like you said, and I, I'll, I'll even show it to you too. I'm like, I'm not even playing with you. This was probably Monday or Tuesday before we did all this. Any situation that you have, like, you can find an answer to it yeah. in scripture. Like, obviously, it's not going to be like, my cell phone broke and like what do I do with that but it's like if you're having financial problems like this is what you need to do if you're having health problems this is what you need to do yeah. so, you know obviously a kind of a blanket statement but it applies to many different things and then uh, what was it we were talking about um, dang it I was going somewhere else with it uh, I lost it I lost it it'll come back it'll, it'll come, come back. back it'll come back um, but yeah like it's we were talking about help me out we were or talking we about, <laughs> <laughs> listen, like when it comes to the word, y'all, sometimes it's there in your head, yeah. and then sometimes it's there in your soul. So try to get the soul to talk to the head. Yeah. It's an interesting process, going but <laughs> going back to the word. To and the then word. Uh, I was also saying, um, like, it's, I'm not saying the Bible isn't perfect because it's the perfect answer for some of the things that you're going through, but like. Now I'm lost. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you. Um, it's okay. Let <laughs> at the end of the day, um, let's let's talk about let's talk about a little bit BGCA, a little bit more bit BGCA. BGCA. Um, what would you say like when it comes to the movement? Is something that you really do enjoy and that you want to inflict on others and influence with them? And when then what's something that you feel like could change? Mm. As, now I'm asking the question. As Victor would say, that's a very good question. <laughs> Or Xavier, 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 Xavier. Xavier. Forgive me, forgive me. Victor, Victor, we love is, you too. Victor we love you too, Victor. Brianna, no, my girly, I miss you. Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Little moment, little moment. Now you're good. Um, so something that I would like to kind of pass down to teens, right? Mm -hmm. You can, teens and advisors too, because I don't, advisors. I don't feel like we talk about that enough. Like advisors. The connections between advisors, like you and Mr. Ryan, I tell everyone, you're my top two favorite advisors. I haven't met anyone like you. Mr. Ryan, of course, that's my dad. But the first moment we met, we bonded. And I think that was a God-given circumstance and mm -hmm. a God-given interaction because like three years later, about yeah. two or three years later, mm -hmm. still have the contact. And you, I think you've seen me grow, but also you've seen the way that I try to present myself and you've realized like that's something that my kids can relate to because now I'm trying to like help uh, some of your youth of the years. Yeah, and some, yeah mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to pass it down the way you pass it down to me. Right. Um, so to answer first question, um, I think for me, uh, first and foremost is, and I always have to check myself sometimes, is like you don't know everything. Um, you don't have to be given everything. Um, you don't have to be recognized for everything. Um, it's not always going to come no matter how much hard work you put into mm. it. Uh, but the biggest thing that I would say is, and we kind of touched on it, is literally never stop learning. Yep. I think that's the, probably the biggest thing that I would tell people because, and that, and that can be applicable to not only just life, but the career field that you're going into. I mean, I see it a lot in like the music industry, podcast industry. It's like, especially the way that things are changing, constantly yeah. like you have to keep learning because even just like social media like social media is changing so it's like the way that you post today may not be the same oh, or won't be applicable or as popular next week 
So it's like you're constantly having to learn what is going to work, what is not going to work. And I say that the same thing with my job to advisors, literally never stop learning because that is what has gotten me to who I am today. A lot of times the things that we learn are what mold us to who we are. Yep. You know, like when I when I won the, the Spirit um, Spirit Award for Keystone. Well deserved. Thank you. Um, and, you know, obviously, like, I, I do have that, uh, being transparent, I do have that hope of um, advisor of the year one, one day. Um, if it doesn't come, again, it's one of those things. You don't need recognition for everything mm -hmm. to know that you're still doing a Almost good job. Definitely. I think that's where I'm going with that, too, is you don't need recognition to know that you're doing a good job. But one of the things that I would always say is, you know, this award, same thing with the spirit and same thing would be for the advisor. This award really is for all the advisors that have ever poured into me. Oh yeah, most definitely. Because I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for all of you. And that could be just a simple conversation and just one nugget that I took from you. Like I'll shout out Miss Christine, even just this week. And it's something so simple, you know, with the whole glitch with the airports and stuff. And she was just like, yeah, did you know that you can link the the red the confirmation numbers so that you guys can be under one thing so that you can fly with unaccompanied minors oh, so they don't stop you at the airport like they almost did on monday and my kids almost didn't get to come here because they said they couldn't travel it's like things like that make my job easier it may seem like something so simple or so small but it's like the next time that i do a trip and say there is that glitch again i know what to do yeah. or i can just do it in general and just kind of avoid any of those obstacles in the future and again mr ryan um mr davin um just so many people um uh i could the list can go on and on but just so many people that have poured into me again either little nuggets or just times coming to keystone conferences and just pouring into me um with just little bits of knowledge that i've just literally taken back and been like how can i apply this at my program how can I do that? And that's what advisors need to do in these situations. I know sometimes like the sessions can seem long. They can seem boring. Not but, like boring. <laughs> but, a lot of talking. But, a lot of talking. Yeah. <laughs> a take, lot of talking. Honestly, like take take the things in. Again, oh, it's yeah. almost like with scripture and, and things that we see, like take use your discernment. Take what you need mm -hmm. and take what's not gonna work or what's not applicable and and go with it. Or take a nugget and then see how you can flip it mm -hmm. to what is going to be applicable for you so for advisors like literally like keep learning because again things are constantly changing and we're not going to know everything our kids are going to be changing and you never know you could have that and to kind of go to almost to you it's like don't be afraid of who you're learning from well, yeah and i can take that to scripture there was, and again, I'm, I'm not fully known on scripture, donkey or goat, um, the goat even taught the guy a lesson because he was trying to kick the goat in one direction and the goat was seeing an angel trying to guide him in one direction. And he's like, dude, do you realize that this goat or donkey or whatever was trying to save you from death? Like you were about to die. And this goat was teaching you a lesson and talking to you. So it's like, don't be afraid to, to, of who you are learning from. So I say that to say like, again, youth of the year. I sit and listen to the teens. Tell me your story. Tell me what you guys have been through. Tell me here, what is your insulation looking like? What are you guys dealing with? How are you dealing with it? Yeah. Cause that could be stuff, it could be stuff that we're also dealing with too, that we can be like, oh, I didn't even think of that. But it's like, if you don't give people the opportunity to speak mm -hmm. and to share, and, f and to get to know them and understand their story. Silenced. Exactly, you're never going to, you're never gonna grow and you can, it, again, you could miss out on opportunities of things that you can add. And again, one of the breakout sessions that we had for this is like, you know, figuring out what the what the need is in your program. And one of the things that the, our kids brought up was a lot of times, not so much in our youth center, but like in the schools and sometimes even with parents, it's like, they don't want to deal with situations. Oh, yeah. They don't want to deal with the kids. It's like, oh, put an iPad in front of them or, oh, you'll be fine. You know, you're being bullied. Oh, you're, you'll be fine. You're just like, you're just oh, not. tough skin, like toughen up or yeah, something like, like that. They, they're not acknowledging it. So then by the time it comes to it, 
they're being silenced and they're not saying anything anymore. So that when you're giving them the opportunity to speak, they don't want to say anything because they have nothing to say because they feel like, what's the point? Because when I did say something, you weren't listening. Oh, yeah. I, you didn't care. I know. Um, so with that class I was talking about earlier, Lives of Black Women and Girls, we talked about different forms of injustice, uh, especially at the epistemic le level. And we talked about like, the epistemology of ignorance and how like we could confirm to a certain set of like rules or certain biases, and it's wrong. But because we're as a, a society believing in it, we're all right but no you're not at all and we also talked about like testimonial quieting like when people are silenced because they automatically assume like a, they automatically assume things about you stereotypes or they just think your story is going to be this way because you were raised this way and now i'm going to put that on you no your words have power you don't realize you could put a story onto someone and then that story actually becomes some part of their life it, it's bad just because everybody believes it, not to cut you out, oh, not, no, just because everybody believes it doesn't make oh, yeah. doesn't mean that it's right. Hitler made everybody believe that Jews were just terrible people mm -hmm. and needed to be wiped off the face of the earth. But that's everybody else knows that is morally wrong. But he made people believe it, mm -hmm. even though it was wrong. And it, it's just like when it comes to these BGCA programming and just stepping out of your comfort zone and listening, like you said, you never know who you're going to learn from. I'm going to be a thousand percent honest. I think advisors learn a lot from youth 100%. and then take those and pass it on to another advisor. So it stemmed from a youth like, oh my gosh, okay, Keandre. So Keandre is one of the youth that I mentored when I was in Bomb Holder. And when it came to social media, he took over the social media account that I had. Mm -hmm. Today, no, yesterday, they were asking questions about um, how to retain youth. And he was like, oh, I know, like, when it comes to Instagram posts, if I target certain people that I know people want to see, I target them, take a photo, and then because they saw themselves and their friends within that post, they repost it. You know who taught him that? Me. And he built upon it. And it was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, that was stuff I told you in passing. And... I told him, I was like, you got to pray on people. I didn't even say it the right way. Yeah. But he took it and built upon it. So it's like, yeah, you really don't know where you're learning from. But you also, you don't know what you're imparting onto people. So don't right. take that stuff for granted. And also, don't be afraid of change. Um, yeah. I'm changing colleges, y'all. <laughs> um, <laughs> Xavier didn't work out. Um, I don't do the throwing up the X anymore. Instead... I sick them bears. I'm going to Baylor University this fall. Congrats, congrats. I'm so, so excited. Yes. Uh, I got a scholarship uh, for being a transfer, but then also all my leadership. I will be, this is a very long title. We love those. I am a communication specialist and journalism double major with a PR concentration and a minor in nonprofit management. Okay. So we're getting there, but at the same time, that was a big change for me. And yeah. the work, well, not the worst part about it, but it was just a lot of anxiety. I asked my mother, I didn't plan at all. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. I, it happens, but at the end of the day, I know what's right for me. And I'm also glad because Baylor is a Christian university. Yeah. And I feel like one of the things when it comes to like taking care of the whole person, I'm being cared for spiritually, mentally, physically, and even financially. Yeah. Everything and emotionally, everything that I needed I have, and it's in a place that I was afraid to go. Yeah. Everything I need, I have, and it was because, and it came from a place, uh, a person I was afraid to listen to. So it all connects back, though. Like people yeah. don't realize that. So, like with the influence part, I would say definitely like don't be afraid to partake in getting information, but also don't be afraid to like use your voice and give information and give advice. And I was, yeah, ended with that, yeah. And that's what I was, I, I've been thinking about this, like, as we were, you know, kind of agreeing to, or trying to coordinate, mm -hmm. sitting down and talking, is is the fact that, you know, which not a lot of people do, again, kind of going back to what we were talking mm -hmm. about, is like you being able to recognize where you were at, and being like, this isn't for me, this isn't where I need to be, and finding a way to making a okay. change, which, again, it, it can be a big, scary change, oh, it was especially scary. changing schools, and and from one location to another and you know distancing and family and everything else like that's a big transition for a lot of people like i've thought about moving to texas and i'm like man like the impact that that can have like moving away from my mom what do i do you know do i move there do i rent do i wait do i buy a house do i you know like just all these different thoughts that can go through your mind and it's like 
you know, being able to recognize where you're at and being like, no, like this isn't, for whatever reason that you left, you know, whether it's mental, physical, whatever, whatever, like recognizing like this isn't okay for me and I need to do something about yeah, it. I don't think and people, doing it. I don't think people realize like that inner voice in your head, sometimes it can be like someone that said something to you a long time ago that completely destroyed you because sometimes that was me. That was a family member that said something. I was like, now I hear that on repeat. But also that voice is you. It's yeah. some figment of yourself. It could be a guilty conscience or it could just be something, like I said, someone imparted on you. For me, when I was at Xavier, I kept on telling myself, it'll be fine. Like, it's okay. Everyone deals with adversity. I kept invalidating myself because it's like I'm a college freshman. Like, it's not going to be perfect. No, nothing, yeah. nothing is truly perfect. But at the end of the day, I'm here. So I kept on saying, you'll deal with it. You'll deal with it. I couldn't deal with it anymore. It was to the point where... I was having mental breakdowns in my room. I would seclude myself. I had people come up to me and be like, nah, you're like, I know you're involved in a lot, but I don't see you around campus anymore. I'm like, I chill in my room. That's literally all I do. I would even like take my dinner in my room. I didn't want to be out anymore. And it took me realizing those small insignificant changes that I thought were insignificant were actually leading to me not even feeling like I was belonging at Xavier anymore. And the first time I said I was going to transfer, I was like, oh, I, I'm going to do it. But then I didn't even apply to any single college. Mm. My mom, she thinks it's because of ill planning. But honestly, it was because my final straw, it took me so long to get to that point. Don't ever do that to yourself. Because then, another thing people don't realize, the way you allow people, circumstances, and environments to treat you is telling of how you love yourself. Yeah. You're telling people how to love you if you let them constantly run over you or if you let them constantly belittle you and diminish your spirit. No, the only person you need validation from is God. The only place you need to seek validation from is the Bible. And the only place that you really need to engage with others is in your kingdom and in your community. That's literally it. And even then, it's not always your community because not everyone has the same accord as you. Right. But at the end of the day, when it came to Xavier, I knew that I wasn't in a place where I could continuously grow. If you feel like in your garden that you are currently a weed, you need to do whatever you can to turn into a flower. Yeah. Because at the end of the day as well, you won't blossom automatically, but in your right season, in your right timing, in God's timing, not only will you blossom, your whole garden will be full. And I remember Miss Kendra was talking. I love Miss Kendra. Miss Kendra was talking to me. She was like, in life, you're going to pull weeds. And then you're also going to pull flowers. But then those flowers could turn into weeds. At the end of the day, you just need to pick the weeds out, regather yourself, and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to do with Xavier. I had to realize that I wasn't growing. I wasn't at my fullest potential. And then I had to find a school that matched that potential and that show that they cared because people don't realize like with colleges if I don't feel connected to it I'm not going if I didn't right. feel connected to BGCA I'm gonna be a thousand percent honest I will not be at these events mm -hmm. there's a reason why I keep coming back there's a reason why you're in the position that you are sometimes your circumstances you can't control it but other times you control your circumstances or other times you let your circumstances control you and that's not what it needs to be right. so when it came to this i kept letting my circumstances control me and i can't do that i had to just give it to god i let go and let god now i'm at baylor university and they they post bible verses like i love y'all they post bible verses and it's bible verses that i can relate to they'll do like a post maybe every week and it's like a Bible verse, a picture of the campus, and I see people commenting, amen, or reposting. I can't repost it yet. Dang. I wasn't even supposed to say I was going to Baylor. I can, I can do <laughs> No, 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 you're good. It's fine now. Like, my family knows. Everyone that needs to know, no, I'm going to Baylor. So, yeah, that, that's the... Oh, yeah, that's right, because I remember, like, you put, like, where, guess where I'm going to go? Guess it's okay. Go. It's okay. I love y'all so much. I'm just going to say it anyway. But, like I said, don't... Oh, Lord. Complacency. Complacency is a form of self-harm. Yeah. I think I said that last one. I think I said that on the last podcast, mm -hmm. but it's so true. If you're complacent, you're not opening yourself to new opportunities, but you're also showing yourself that you're not deserving of those opportunities. Yeah. And honestly, us as people of God and as people that continuously talk to each other about God, we deserve the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. 100%. Clock it. Yeah. Clock it. Hey. <laughs> I need to stop doing that. No, it's true. Like I, li I like what you said about you know just letting situations control you oh, yeah. not control you because i think sometimes you are put in certain situations that may look challenging but you're meant to be there for Almost a reason definitely. to help 
fix it. But again, be mindful to make sure that those situations don't start controlling you, that you have a handle on it, and also understanding that you are there for a purpose. And make sure that you fulfill that purpose, talk to God, understand what that purpose is. Because again, preparation. If you're trying to do everything thinking under your own understanding of what you need to be doing, you could be making things worse. Oh, you can. And people don't realize, I'm going to say this to the camera too, you can't do everything, but you can do anything you put your mind to. I feel like sometimes we try to take on too much because we see it popularized. We see it romanticized. Mm -hmm. We see it put on such a high pedestal that we try to put ourselves on that pedestal, but realize there are certain steps you got to take to get there. Okay. So, like I said, you could do everything. Well, you can't do everything, but you could do anything you put your mind to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something youth need to realize as well. People, they always talk to me, they be like, you had no social life when you were at Bomb Holder. And I'm like, well, one? Dang. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think right? I have one. Yeah. But they just saw that I was constantly volunteering, constantly, constantly, constantly. That was my piece. Right. Being able to help someone show that not only... Am I here for a reason? But I could also make that impact that I've always had, people have always had on me. And then, honestly, that makes me feel most connected to God when I'm helping someone else. Call to be servants. Yeah, that's what uh, Baylor actually has already implemented in their programs. Uh, one of the courses that we had to, uh, we could take, it's implemented in there. You can go and do volunteer hours and yeah. you get course credit for it. That's the selfless part that people don't realize. And yes, selfless is less of self, but self is still in there for a reason. Doesn't right. mean you completely disregard yourself. It just means that when it comes to helping other people, you're still there, but they're there with you. It's, you're not alone. And I hate when people say, like, I feel alone. There's no such thing as feeling alone. You feel lonely, but you're never alone because not only do you have God by your side, you also have his son and the Holy Spirit. You have the whole Trinity. Does it get any better than that? You got everything that you need. You do, honestly. and you have so, many, so much in your arsenal. You just got to learn how to utilize it. Yeah. I use my voice. My voice is my arsenal. And, like, I still write poems to this day, amplifying my voice and projecting it in a way that any room I walk into, you're going to notice my presence. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do at BG Savings. You, sometimes you notice my presence. You usually see me eating, but... <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's less of me and more of him. Amen. But it doesn't mean that I think that's I'm a song. not existing. Huh? I think that's a song, a Christian mm -hmm. song. It might be. Uh, Less of me and more of you is all I need. Or something. It's yeah, something yeah. like that. I think it is. See? Probably. Probably. But, it's, but again, it, it doesn't mean that I'm non-existent because I have to be there to do his will. Again, I, I may be sacrificing my own will, but I'm the one that does God's will. Amen. That's what he's calling for us to do. Again, it doesn't take me out of the picture because if I'm out of the picture, then there's, there's no self. There's no his will being implemented. So it's... That's something you know, something that I've been trying to work on too. Is you know, as a person, you know, it's just less of me, more of him. What do you need me to do? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to do it? Even in spaces like these, like before I left, like you know, we had service on Sunday, and you know, I talked to my pastor, and I was like, listen, like I'm going into a space that can be worldly. Mm -hmm. It can be, you know, and it, it poses a lot of challenges for me just on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely, I don't want to say I struggle, but I struggle. You know, obviously maintaining, you know, my Christian lifestyle and, and the way that I want to walk with God, but also being here, let's be honest. So it's 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 one of those things that I was like, listen, like, I just want, I want to just pray that I can, and I think you kind of touched on it, be that light, because it was a preaching that we were talking about um, that day too. And I said, I want to be that light when I'm there. I don't want to turn the flashlight off Never because should. I'm there and I'm uh, and because I'm safe in my you know I'm safe in my church and I'm doing my own thing you know because like you, you have that comfortability when you're in I your church and your home and your you know it's like but like what are you doing when you're in the world are you the same person that you are in church as you are in the world because oh that's what people not, don't realize because if you're not that's a problem because then you're just what are you doing so I, I to sum it up really quick, that's why I was like, I, again, something that I needed to work on, still need to work on, I'm not perfect, 
is how can I be that light while I'm here yeah. um, without yeah. removing that. Yeah, because no one's perfect, but Jesus made the perfect sacrifice for us. Amen. And one of the things that I feel like people need to ask themselves Yes, in the kingdom, God has a place and a house for us to rest eternally and forever. But right now, if you have to sit there and look at yourself and ask yourself, am I deserving of that place that God has given me? And you say no, that means it's time to go immediately back to your word. Because it's so hard to not become of the world sometimes because it's sure. all you're surrounded about, around like even at college i would say i myself slipped up a lot of times to be honest yeah. and whether that was the way i was acting or the way i was talking to people trying to fit in i had to step back and realize like if I truly am trying to have these Bible verses in my bio, if I'm trying to sit here and repost, oh, Jesus, this, Jesus, that, but then I'm sitting over here talking about this, that, and the third, or I'm doing this, that, and the third, am I really being what I'm representing, or am I trying to represent a model? And God is a jealous God. Let me tell you how quick he got me. I tried to idolize people instead of idolizing him, and guess what I did? I lost those people. And I, it felt so bad for me, but at the end of the day, I realized I was idolizing, idolizing relationships instead of trying to go into the right direction with the one relationship I truly need in life. Yes, I love having people around me, but at the end of the day, if I'm not comfortable within myself and the person that God has made me to be, I don't need to be in that place. Mm -hmm. If anything, that door is locked. Yeah, God had to take those people and remind you. you mm -hmm. know. Same thing with me. And that's not a bad thing. Too. It's like, remind us like, of what we're doing it's mm -hmm. kind of having that discernment and being like oh, oh man like why did i lose those friends but then it's like what was i yeah. who was i replacing with those friends? ask those why questions. did they leave yeah. you know and that's the holy spirit that's the holy spirit talking to you being like bro we took these people from you because you were focusing on the wrong things mm -hmm. now i need to remind you who you need to focus on because a lot of times we go through certain things not because God wants to punish us, but to remind us that we need to go back to Him. Mm -hmm. Because there may be some distance that we're creating, or just to remind us that we need to rely on Him at the end of the day. Sometimes we think we can do everything. Oh. Uh, again, I'll speak for myself. This is one thing that I'm, again, working on. is like we try to do it on our own strength. We try to do it on our own merit. And God is like, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. Yeah. And we got to rely on him. Yeah, because everyone wants to be, well, not everyone wants to be. Sometimes people are like, God, I don't know why this year you made me your strongest soldier. But let me tell <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah, it yeah. ain't yeah. working. Yeah, <laughs> Some people want that position, and then others are, like, shying away from it. At the end of the day, God made you you for a reason. There's no one else like you in the world. Like, people don't realize there's only one of you. So why not capitalize on that? You're your own brand. People don't think about it in these, well, I'm also a PR major. But at the end of the day, you're your own brand. You're your own representation. And the way you are impacts others in unintentional ways, but also intentional because we have a God that is intentional and never failing. So Amen. just capitalizing on that. I don't know who just called me, but yeah, who was that? My mother. Okay. So, yeah. We got to talk to moms. We, we got to talk to moms. I love my moms. Um. I'm going to just say this. Thank you, Mr. Justin, for being for sure. one of the most profound impacts I've ever had in my life. Thank you for allowing me Very to come nice. on this podcast. And just thank you for being you. You're the true personification of God changing your life. Because I remember when we first met, we kind of had that religious aspect, but it wasn't talked about. I've seen you so deep in your word. I've seen you reposting. Please go watch his Two Cents videos. Please go follow the For His Glory, all of that. Because at the end of the day, this is a true personification of God's work and what he will do for you because I feel like it's elevated your platform, but then it's also elevated you. And I want to say I'm very proud of you and I can't wait Thank to you. see where it goes. And if you come to Texas. Heck yeah. I got family in Texas, so. It's going to be uh, San Antonio. Which Beyonce. Is not oh, I'm, I'm Waco and Waco. Fort Cavazos. Waco's not that far. Waco's about an hour away from Colleen. Well, it's not Colleen. Well, it is Colleen. I, I'm in, the, like, my family's in the Colleen area. I'm in Waco. Okay. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, again, it's always been a pleasure to see you grow, see you stay thank connected. You. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Of course. With your busy schedule, Miss Celebrity over here. Oh, my gosh. Um, don't let my ego bi get bigger. I, I don't have an ego. <laughs> yeah, let's keep the egos <laughs> at the door. And that's speaking for both of us. 
Uh, but no, I appreciate you for okay, real. Um, nice. I want to say thank you to everybody that's been tuning in, watching a special edition of the Right Mind Wednesdays podcast. I want to shout out to my team. Um, we are here at the 2024 National Keystone Conference yes. doing our thing. BGCA friends all around. One more time, I want to say God bless to everybody. Appreciate y'all. But until next time, my name is Jay Faith and we got... My name is Naya. Stay blessed by the best. I stole that from someone. I'm not going to say his name. Amen. 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 <laughs> and this is the Right Mind Wednesdays podcast. We'll catch y'all next time. What's up?